Hey YouTube, um, welcome back to my channel. This is still a work in progress, uh, so bear with me. Uh, I know it's not professional quality and all that stuff. I'm working on it, I promise. But I wanted to come back today just to share with you guys what is Friedrich's ataxia. Um, exactly. Uh, in my previous video, which I want to encourage you guys to go back and watch, is that um, about my story and about my diagnosis and, and a little touched a little bit on my life. But um, this video, I'm going to tell you pretty much what it is. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. Uh, so, I'm not going to be using uh, a lot of uh, medical terminology to explain it to you guys. I'm going to kind of, I don't want to say dumb it down, but uh, kind of uh, just share with you guys, you know, in layman's terms, what it is. Uh, so, Friedrich's ataxia, which I refer to it as F.A., um, is spinocerebellar generation. So pretty much what that is, is central nervous system failure. There is a, a chemical developed in the brain called frataxin. That, uh, and this is where I'm just going to kind of like F.A. for dummies here. Um, this chemical maintains the health of your cerebellum in the back of your brain and your spinal cord and of course all the rest of the nerves throughout your body from head to toe your body requires nerves for everything sensation hair growth um you know vision eye uh vision and uh ears you know hearing uh speech that's why my speech is not as good as it should be. I, I have good days and bad days for that. And everything in between, everything you can imagine is controlled by nerves. The best way that I can explain it to you guys is the brain is the modem. And the uh, sp spinal cord, there we go, got it out. The spinal cord is the telephone line. And then all the nerves throughout the body and all the organs and everything is controlled by the telephone line. And all those nerves and all those organs are the recipients of the telephone service. Bear with me. I'm, I'm really trying here. <laughs> I really am. Um, now, what is happening is this, uh, chemical produced that can't figure out where it's produced or how to replicate it. So, I'll explain that in a second. But, um, so, this chemical maintains that health. So, without this chemical, the phone cord and the, the brain, the modem... Are slowly dying. Uh, now, fortunately, I will never lose lose my cognitive thinking. I'll never have a uh, mental retardation. Um, I'll never have anything like that. But um, everything is slowly dying. So, therefore, the communication from the brain down through the modem, uh, down through the telephone line. And then to all the recipients is slowly dying. It's deteriorating. So that's the best way I can explain it. They cannot find where it's produced. It's a medical mystery. They cannot figure out where it's produced or, you know, how to replicate it. So, therefore, it's not treatable and not curable. And, of course, you can read more about... The uh, logistics of it, like in depth, um, on a website. If you Google Friedrichs ataxia, it'll tell you more. Um. So, um, let's see what was I gonna say here? 
the what happened was my mom carried one recessive gene. My dad carried one recessive gene. They had no idea about it. And they came together and made a dominant. So, therefore, I got the dominant gene. And slowly over time, I've been deteriorating. Um, I first, whenever I was diagnosed in uh, 2007, um, I was normal. I mean, you could tell a little bit. I mean, like if I took off running or, you know, maybe my gait some days was a little disturbed. Or I would, like, bump into a door frame. Uh, things like that, but never really caught on. And, uh, so I continued through high school. I was normal, did all the normal activities in high school. Obviously, I knew I couldn't play sports. So, I was an all-sports manager. And, um, I continued with my normal life driving. I did everything. Um, I've done a lot for somebody my age. A lot of traveling. Um, I have been involved in a lot of things. Worked right up until I could not work any longer. Um, and I'll explain that in just a second. But... Um, so how it happened was I went from about 20, I started walking the cane and then I went to a rollator walker, um, and then I went to a, a wheelchair in 2016 and stopped driving, decided to hang up my keys in 2017. So, you know, it is very difficult mentally on you. It's very frustrating physically, but mentally to look at yourself in the mirror every day and like the droopy eyes and the bad speech and going down on one ear and, you know, losing my vision in this eye. It's very hard mentally on you to look at yourself in the mirror and see a deteriorating body and you can't do anything about it. It's very heartbreaking um, to yourself and to other people that are going through the same thing, maybe more progressed than you are. There is, um, um, uh, there is like, uh, oh, how do you say it? Um, I do that too, due to the accident. I had an accident, which you can hear me talk about in the previous video. Um, I was crossing the street and a guy hit me with his vehicle going about 45 miles an hour and threw me 75 feet. He put me in the hospital for about a month. And then um, I was on outpatient physical therapy again for another six months, I guess. And um, so I do that from time to time. I repeat myself because of the brain injury. Also, I lose my train of thought. I don't have any mental deficits, uh, meaning I can still think, I'm, I'm still smart, you know. Uh, I don't have any deficits like that, but I do struggle with those things. Short-term memory, um, I do struggle with. So, um, but uh, see, what was I saying? Uh, there's mild moderate and severe Friedrich syntaxia. And it all goes based on how many times the gene mutates that they find. I, I don't know what the, the gene is called. Uh, you can look it up, but um, if it repeats or uh, something about repetition, all that, if it repeats, so many times you're mild. Whenever you uh, repeat, so many times you're moderate. Uh, and so, so forth and so on. Well, I'm moderate case. I was diagnosed uh, when I was 16. Usually comes out in adolescence. Things like that. And then, you know, you're wheelchair bound. Usually by your early 20s. And you uh, have start having... Uh, 
life-threatening complications, usually around mid-age, 35, 40. Uh, then you have mild, which some people, um, and, that, and that's the thing about F.A. It is so different from one person to the other. Uh, you know, they can never tell. Uh, they can kind of guesstimate, I guess, but uh, it's really, it's not like a black and white thing. So, uh, some people with mild, they they get diagnosed in their 20s and live up until their 70s. Some people with mild, uh, they get diagnosed in their late 30s and they live a very full life. And then you have severe, which is the saddest case, um, where you have people that were uh, diagnosed at 8, 9, 10, 11, around there. And they start having life-threatening complications into their mid-20s. And uh, they start having those issues. It will leave me, uh, eventually it is progressive. So eventually it will leave me bedridden, uh, totally incapacitated. And uh, eventually it will be my downfall. Uh, it will cause my death. Um, but I choose not to let that get me down. So that's the next thing I wanted to go into was that's why I started all this. Why I've gone so, you know, I've gone so far on TikTok and, you know, I'm really trying to get to 10,000. So if you guys can help me out with that, that would be wonderful. I mean, hey, you know, a million would be great, but, you know, I'll sell for 10,000, 15,000. Um, but that's the whole reason I started that, and this was to inspire, to show people that a disability, whether it be F.A. or M.S. or, you know, anything in your life, you may not be disabled at all, but maybe me telling my story and showing you guys how I live and how, you know, my attitude towards everything, uh, maybe you guys can be inspired by that. It'll help you. Um, it'll show you a couple of tricks that I've learned. I don't know everything. And you guys can probably teach me a few things. And I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. And I'm excited to get back, you know, feedback from you guys. Tell me what I can do differently. Tell me the things that you want to hear me talk about. Um, and I'll be doing a lot of those videos coming out in the future. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, like I tell everybody, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to ask you those questions. Or I, I don't want to get up in your personal business. You can, definitely. I am so open and I definitely want to help you and tell you. Uh, things about my life, but you can do it respectfully. Uh, so I want to ask each and every one of you to be respectful. Ask anything you want, say anything you desire, but be respectful while you do it. So um, I do have a GoFundMe up. I'm trying to raise money uh, for my handicap equipment. And that's another thing that I will go into. Um, I'm on Medicare, and Medicare only pays for 80% of uh, DME, which is durable medical equipment. Um, and they only pay for what is needed. They do not pay for transportation, uh, like a wheelchair van or um, a uh, lift, to go onto the back of a vehicle or a ramp to get out of your house. Um, they don't pay for any of that. That's on you. And then they only pay for about 80% of the wheelchair. Now wheelchairs, now you can pick up a wheelchair for a couple hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Wheelchair. But for people like me that need specialty 
custom wheelchairs for comfort because they're sitting in it 24 seven. Um, they're about, mine was about $24,000. Um, and of course they paid 80% of that. I had to come up with almost six grand. Um, and I had to put that on a uh, care credit card. So I have about $1,200 left to pay that off. And then I'm gonna, after I get that paid off, I'm gonna move on to a Hoyer lift. Uh, you can look that up. Um, it is to help with lifting um, out of a bed or out of a chair and into a shower, things like that. Um, and then again, Medicare will pay for 80% of that, but I'm left with the other 20%. The biggest issue that I'm having right now is a way to get out of the house. I don't have a ramp because I can't afford it. I can't afford four or $5,000. Um, I cannot afford a wheelchair van. Wheelchair van is usually anywhere from 70 to 90 thousand dollars and we're not talking about a, a mercedes benz we're not talking about you know this crazy vehicle we're talking about hondas toyotas dodge caravans the ones that you see on the road every day or whenever you go do your shopping somewhere those are the ones that are going to be about 70 75 80 thousand dollars and i'm on the hook for that uh, so, that's why I have a GoFundMe up, and uh, to try and get donations to pay for that. Uh, so, if you guys uh, could spread the word, share these videos, give me more subscribers, and I'll continue doing them to inspire to show you guys my daily life. Kind of like a daily journal type thing. Um, but if you can share this and get more donations for me um it would really help i um have a link tree i'll put the um by in the uh description below my link tree that way you guys can go check it out i have an amazon wish list on it i have a gofundme and a venmo cash app um all that stuff so if you guys want to go check that out it'll be wonderful for me um, and I'll continue to uh, show you guys and tell you guys things about myself and about my daily life that will maybe help you and inspire you. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. And remember, in everything you do and say, show love and kindness. Thank you guys so much.